Can you hit? There you go. Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and today's video is going to be all about these little goat creatures out here. And it is officially breeding season here in southern Oklahoma for these goats. I've noticed Isaac the last oh, week or two walking the fence line trying to get to the does and now the does are starting to stand at the fence and you can just tell by their sounds and their, their mannerisms and their body language that they're ready to start cycling and ready for old Isaac to be turned in. Isaac's getting up there in years. I mean, I think he's, have to go back and look, but he's a little over eight years old. This will probably be Isaac's last breeding season. But before we turn Isaac in, I want to work, get all the does up and work everybody, trim their feet, check for worms. I'm probably gonna go ahead and just worm all the goats and uh, do everything. So we're gonna be using the, the, the little deluxe spin and trim chute that Lakeland Farm and Ranch Direct sent us. I've never used an actual squeeze chute for goats, but that's what this little thing's designed for. They sent it to us, wanted us to test it out, try it, show it to you guys. And in the past, all I've ever done is just basically just kind of pin my goats up in a small pen and kind of manhandle them, grab a hold of them, hold them down, give them a couple shots. Not a big deal. So we're gonna vaccinate them, gonna be giving them a, a CD&T, which is Clostridium perfringens types one and two, plus tetanus, I believe is what it stands for. It's the only um, vaccine that I give my goats. And like I said, we'll be worming them. We'll flip them over in the spin chute, check their feet. Now, most of my goats are Kiko or Kiko Cross. There's a couple, like this big, this little spotted one that Houston got earlier this year. She's part Kiko, but just a little bit. And the Kikos are known to be parasite resistant and not to have their feet trimmed very often. That's kind of what they're known for. But I want to go ahead, get everybody up, check them, look them over, make sure they don't need their feet trimmed and all that good stuff. So yeah, let's get that chute moved up here. I'm going to build a little working area. They also sent some uh, aluminum easy panels that just move around to build a little working facility. I'm not going to use the long chute that I use for cattle and stuff. It's too wide. The goats can basically turn around and go the other way. I could set up those easy panels in there and narrow it. I don't know just exactly how I'm going to do all of it yet, but we'll get it figured out. So let's get to work. So step one is just trying to figure out my layout. I think I am going to go ahead and use my little alleyway for my corral system. One side has four by four sheep and goat panels on there. I just haven't added them to the other side. So we'll make it work. That's why we have the portable panels. We can set up a narrow alleyway because obviously a goat that size can spin around and take off the other way. So the chute, super easy to move around. It's got detachable wheels. So while it has the wheels on it, you can just kind of pick it up and maneuver it around. This front handle slides out and you can put it in the other way and attach it to uh, an ATV or a lawnmower or something and tow it around. But before we try to get this set in place, I'm going to get my little uh, aluminum easy panels here set up and figure out a configuration. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and move the goats from where they're at over to the corral. Should be pretty easy with a bucket of feed. They pretty much follow you where you want to go. You have to listen to them talking that all day, huh? Watch it, chicken. Mm -hmm. 
All right, before I go over some of the workings of that squeeze chute, we'll, we'll talk about my layout first. Now, it's not pretty, it's temporary, and that's the thing about these little aluminum panels. They all just pin together with drop pins, just drop them in place, but this main part pivots, so it's set up to where these can just be easily moved once they're put together. They're like, I don't know, 20, 22 pounds a piece, something like that. So I've got a little alleyway set up. It may not be tight enough yet, most of my goats obviously aren't this small, but so we'll run them through. I've got it set up to where when I let them out of the chute, I can hold this other gate shut and they go back into the pasture where they belong. So it's not pretty, but it'll work. So let's get everybody lined up and funneled in. Let's, we've already got a volunteer or two coming down. So before I do, let me talk about this chute real quick. So as I said, this was sent to us by Lakeland Farm and Ranch Direct. I'll leave a link in the description box. They sent us the chute and these little aluminum panels. So the concept here is we're, we're going to open the gate, let a goat come in, shut the gate behind them. We've got an automatic catching head gate. So as you can see, it's opened in. And as the goats hit, their shoulders will push, locks their head in the chute. And then when we want to let them out, it'll open out hard to do with one hand but when we're ready to let them out it'll open outward and they can go through so this is a squeeze chute and it's a, it will close down on the goat close them down like that there's some pads in here these are these are foam pads they sent with us so that it's you know nice and cushiony soft for the goats not going to hurt them but the awesome thing is this little foot pedal down here will allow me to rotate this i can lay it lay the goat completely on its side or for a short time we can spin them come over then drop the floor out and we'll be able to check their feet trim their feet nobody's going to get hurt the goats in there nice and snug and uh, it won't hurt them to be upside down i roll goats over by hand all the time and when we're done put the floor back in place spin them around back normal Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Well, work for part of you. All right, folks. Uh, half of you turned around the wrong direction, so who wants to be first? There you go. See how it caught on her shoulders and the gate's locked on her. I will say this. I think I'm going to have a little bit of an issue because some of them are mature and have big horns. So we had to adjust the pins out a little bit wider. But then, you know, I've got some that are smaller that don't have near as big of horns. Oh, and speaking of breeding season, I don't know if you heard him in the background. But he's definitely got it on his mind. So this big nice Kiko doe, she's one of my original Kikos. I'm gonna clamp her down just a little bit. Get it nice and snug on her. And I really think clamping that down on them works just like it does on cows or bison or anything. Once you get them nice and snug, it really calms them down. So let's take a look at our first vaccine and what we're gonna be doing. So I said earlier, the only two vaccines, we're gonna do a CDT shot. We'll put that sub Q, just goes under the skin. And then we're gonna go ahead and go and worm them all. This is a wormer that I've never used before. So I try to change up my wormer every couple of years so we don't build up a tolerance. So you can see what that is. If you're interested, look it up yourself. Figure out if that's something you wanna use. And you'll notice that I've got this in a bucket of ice. I like to keep these vaccines nice and cold. They're supposed to stay refrigerated. And we'll be out here for you know an hour or so so i want to keep everything chilled so as i said this is a sub q shot or subcutaneous meaning we're just going to pinch up the skin insert right just in that flap of skin and there she go she got her annual vaccine and our wormer is just an oral wormer put it in a syringe and we can get her to tilt her head back. Here you go. Here you go, mama. Yeah. 
So we're just like that, we've got our, fir our first doe vaccinated, wormed. Now I'm gonna flip her over and check her feet. This goat has rarely ever had to have her trimmed feet. She's been an excellent doe. She's probably, I believe about six years old. I'd have to look at her paperwork, but let's flip her over, check out her feet and see where she's at. Okay. So you can see she's just kind of chilled out laying there. She's not panicking, not kicking, squalling, screaming, you know, doing typical goat things. But now we're able to look at her feet. So her feet are in pretty good shape. That hoof is nice and straight. There's a little bit of a little bit of edge that could be trimmed. But all in all, Kiko goats rarely, rarely ever have to have their feet trimmed. And she's in pretty good shape. I may clean up these back toes just a little bit. Put this back on blank place. Spin her around. And I'm just gonna say she's probably ready to get out of here, Bella. Alright, mama girl, you ready to get out? Let's go. Go forward, not backward. There you go. Alright, who's next? Open our gate. Skip, you want to go next? Hmm? Come on, Skip. Come on, Skip. Come on. Oh, what you turn around for, Skip? Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, looky there. Skip got herself in here and got stuck on her own. I didn't even have to help her. That head gate worked on you, didn't it, babe? Okay, so here's a problem I expected to run into, and I'm sure it's my fault more than it is the chute, but I adjusted this out to fit the corns of a bigger goat, and I went ahead and ran a small one through, but as you can see, this little weather was able to back up, so I'm going to have to try to get him back through there. Now, I watched a video on a channel called Sheepishly Me. Her name is Sandy Brock, and she has literally hundreds of sheep, and she found that spreading this out at the bottom because the sheep or goat wants to come through with their head down to try to find a way to push out. So I may spread this out at the bottom and make it more narrow at the top. That way when the goat comes in with their head down, they raise their head up, it gets tighter as they go. So I don't know, we'll see. So here's where we're running into issues. Come on, come on. An animal with horns does not like to go in there. And then bam. All right, come on buddy. Horns in. Horns in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Back up, buddy. Back up. So do you see what I mean? It's not the easiest thing in the world to get all these different sized animals with different size of horns on their head to go through the head gate. And I like the chute, don't get me wrong. It is very convenient, it's easy, not very fast and efficient. I could probably have already caught most of these by hand, give them a shot, give them a wormer, flipped them over, looked at their feet and had them on their way. I can cycle through a lot more, a lot faster, but I'm a 36 year old guy in pretty good shape and that's not the same circumstances for everybody. So the chute does its job. It has a purpose. But we're gonna have to practice on it some more to see if I even like it really.
See there? There's our problem. So that little doe right there makes my point perfectly. And the time I mess around trying to get her in there, I can give her a shot, a wormer, flip her over, check her feet, and be done. So I'm just going to catch her and do it the old-fashioned way. New problem. I've got a little guy here that does not want to stand up. So, we're having issues. There we go. He wants to lay down as soon as he gets in. And he falls below the pads and he's just stuck there. The guy literally almost completely refuses to stand up. Girls with big horns are a problem. Yeah. Well, there you have it. All the does, the dolings, and the few weathers that are you know waiting to go to the processor have been worked we got goofy the little buck over here and isaac i do want to turn isaac in with the does today that is in the plan i've already wormed him and vaccinated him everything a couple weeks ago he's good this guy i just wormed him for the second time just to make sure he's in good shape he probably needs to find a new home just saying i haven't decided yet oh we had one escapee that little red doe right there has always been my wildest goat. So, my impressions on the Lakeland Farm and Ranch Direct spin and trim goat shoot. I have some issues, I have some downfalls, but I will say this, and I've said this multiple times on this video, I am not an expert on these shoots. This is the first one I've ever owned, it's the first one I've ever even used. However, I will say it's uh we're about two and a half hours into this process and filming it does make it take a lot longer guys don't don't mistake that filming things makes it take a lot longer than if you're just out here doing it but i'm i'm not a hundred percent sure that this route is for me on my farm specifically uh, i just had a lot of issues with having different size goats that you know require different size openings for their horns the the pads work really really well on the smaller goats but you did see i had several that were wanting to lay down now the problem i ran into is the big goats the bigger does horns would poke holes in the padding and there were a few that i just couldn't get their horns through they're just got such big horns on them that i just squeezed them down and left their head up above the bars now i didn't spin them like that because the sides are are concave so you can see it it conforms to the body of the goat so when I didn't have them all the way in there where I couldn't squeeze them down tight, I didn't flip them, but I was able to pin their head up high and I could give them the, the medications they needed, the wormer and all that stuff. So it worked, but I'm just not 100% sold on it yet. To me, it needs to be in the right kind of farm setup. Probably needs to be more than one person. This is probably a two person job. So you have somebody to, to work the animals into the chute, somebody to catch, 
and it would, it would just work out a little bit better probably can be done with one person don't get me wrong but these aluminum quick panels that i mean I'll, I'll get them out i'm not gonna leave them all like this but they're so light and easy to move around i could use another 10 of these on our farm probably this is perfect for setting up just a small alleyway or a way to to move animals from one pasture to another or catch them or whatever you need to do uh one thing i probably did wrong you know i had this last panel pinned in here probably need to have your your alleyway obviously pretty narrow i had it kind of wide so they were able to turn around but the goats absolutely did not just want to voluntarily walk up into that chute most of them i had to kind of get them by the tail and and coerce them kind of push them in there a little bit they just uh i don't know they weren't a fan so don't don't take this the wrong way i have a goat hair in my mouth that's kind of nasty i am by no means saying that this this lakeland farm and ranch shoot is a bad shoot or that it doesn't work i'm not an expert in it i'm just testing it out for the first time never used one before but lakeland farm and ranch has a ton of supplies for sheep and goats and cattle and all kinds of livestock stuff they have a bunch of like round bell feeders for sheep and goats and fence line feeders and feeders and troughs and waters and all kinds of stuff that i would like to try out that i think would work great so they have all kinds of stuff no i'm not dogging the company one bit i just don't know that this shoot is the best fit for our farm because with the number of goats i don't have like 100 goats to work What is it, Steve? What's the matter? All right, new game plan. I think instead of trying to sort Isaac and move him, this guy's a lot more friendly, and he'll come to a feed bucket. So I think what I'm going to do is just put this guy in over here with the alpacas. Come on, buddy. Come on. He'll just follow me. Come on through. Whopper. Hey, buddy. Uh... I'm not sure if I want to let you in here yet. See, here's the thing. I don't know that I want Whopper in with the goats because I'm just going to open the gate and let the goats and the donkeys be together. So, you want to come on in? All right, Whopper, you just come on right in. Come right on in. This was your uh, predecessor's favorite little pen. This is where Big Mac stayed. Come on, Whopper. Gate's open. Hey, promise me you'll get along with the alpacas. What's up, buddy? How you and Freedom doing there? Hmm? Any baby donkeys anytime soon? She sure looking mighty thick. Like T H I C C with two C's. Come on, goats. Hey, why are you trying to get out already? Just go over there with Isaac. Come on, goats. <laughs> okay. Slight change of plans again. Since I have oh two or three little dolings that Houston wanted to save back this year that are too small to breed right now, I don't want Isaac to just have the roam of both pastures. So we're gonna separate a few little goats out. Well, we already have separated a few little goats out and moved Isaac over here with his ladies. And Bear is just here for approval, aren't you, Bear? So Isaac, buddy, take it easy on her. If you can't tell, she's really old. Okay, buddy. That, that doe right there got really sick on me this year. She's pretty skinny looking still. But I've got pictures of that old doe. My gosh, she looks so wormy. I've wormed her four times over the last couple months. But I've got pictures of her in Houston's lap when Houston's about, I don't know, a year old maybe. And she was just born. She was a newborn then. So she's getting up there in age. 
I really like her. She's a great doe. She's got a good, you know, she's just she's just been a really good goat, and I'm just good in color. She's she'll stay around until she passes on. But let's see, if Isaac will do his duties. You gonna be able to do your duties? Hmm. They're like the old couple on the farm. They're both about eight years old. So it may have taken me a little longer than planned, but all the goats are worked. Isaac's turned in with the girls. He's showing some interest in a few different does already. So I just hope Isaac's got one more good year of breeding in him, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do with old Isaac. Don't have near as many goats as I used to. You guys may have noticed we've trimmed down our herd quite a bit. I still have three, I think there's four weathers still here that a weather is a castrated male that we're going to send to the processor. So trying to get that done, but you wouldn't believe some of the processors we've called that are booked up until 2021. So we may be butchering some goats ourselves or figuring something out. But anyways, guys, if you're looking for sheep and goat equipment, go check out lakelandfarmandranch.com like i said this was their spin and trim shoot it works probably not the best fit for my farm but they have a lot of other great equipment so go check them out and uh i'm gonna call it quits for the morning it's getting hot and steamy out here i'm sweating like a crazy person uh goat pro shirt um maybe i'm not quite a goat pro but if you're looking for a goat pro shirt get it before the end of august because that store is going to get shut down and I don't know if we're going to have our old designs when we figure out a new company. So armsfamilyhomestead.com for our t-shirts. No sweat included, but we do have hats that aren't sweat stained. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.